Hello and welcome to this week's Not In My Backyard, the show that watches the news so you don't have to. Yes, we're like donations to a political party in that we just don't matter because you undoubtedly will get the news you need from other more questionable sources. It's been a big week for the RSS, what with them deciding to do away with their signature fashion statement ever since the organization was founded in 1925. Yes, we're talking about their short shorts. No longer will we be treated to sites like this or like this of leading RSS members showing some skin while also showing off their Hindu national pride. And no, no matter what, there's no way that wearing those shorts can make you look sexy. Now the move to adopt full-length brown pants instead of the shorts seems tailored to appeal to the youth because, of course, what keeps young educated people away from the RSS is their fashion statement and not their enlightened ideology that teaches Hindu supremacy and to hate non-Hindus. And in case you were wondering why the RSS has suddenly grown fashion conscious, well, perhaps a clue appears in another announcement made by the organization earlier this week. In a climb down from its usual stand on the issue of homosexuality, a top RSS official announced that homosexuality was only socially deviant and should not be a criminal offense. Ironically, the announcement comes just weeks after the BJP defeated a private member bill introduced by Shashi Tharoor in the parliament to decriminalize homosexuality, and this happened twice. So is this just another move by the RSS aimed at appealing to the urban, educated youth or a real change in the fundamentalist organization's mindset? Well, we leave you to decide. Now of late, slogans have become a flashpoint in our society. Certain people have declared some slogans to be anti-national and certain other slogans as necessary to prove our patriotism. And the latest to add to the debate over which slogan is which is AIMIM leader Asaduddin Oasi, who has declared that he will not chant Bharat Mata Ki Jai to prove his patriotism. And we understand why Oasi would have such an issue with this particular slogan. After all, the slogan begs a couple of very crucial questions. First, India is a feminine name, but since when did Bharat become a feminine name that we refer to it as Bharat Mata? Have you ever heard of a woman called Bharat? Would you call your mother or your sister or your daughter Bharat? And secondly, since when did the slogan itself become synonymous with proving one's patriotism over other slogans like Hindustan Zindabad or Vande Mataram or the evergreen India, India? Well, there was certainly a lot of noise thanks in no small part to our news channels but no clear answers to the issue. Meanwhile, in news from Uttarakhand, BJP MLA Ganesh Joshi has been arrested after he led a mob of party protesters who brutally assaulted a police horse named Shaktiman. The horse suffered multiple fractures to one of its legs and had to get it amputated later on. Now it is not clear what irked the mob, whether the horse was caught eating beef or whether it was neighing what sounded like anti-national slogans or whether the mob was simply offended because it was a horse and not a cow. Because after all, while all animals are equal, some animals are more equal than others. But what is clear is that if you get in the way of your not so friendly neighborhood BJP mob, man or animal, the consequences for you will be dire. You can certainly bet a leg on that. Also in the news this week was Union Minister Kiran Rijiju, who claimed that the French CEO Nostradamus had predicted a 12-year Modi era in India almost 500 years ago. According to Rijiju's Facebook post titled Amazing Facts, Nostradamus not only predicted that the Modi government would last from 2014 to 2026, but also that other countries would come to accept India's leadership thanks to Modi's influence. Now we in India have a habit of predicting the past, like whether it's the issue of tracing the birth of Rama to an exact spot in Ayodhya, or the claim that the Bronze Age Vedic civilization had knowledge of and access to nuclear weapons back in the day. The evidence for such claims is usually unscientific and based on vague claims in obscure scriptures. Well, based on these unverified claims, it seems that Rijiju may well be secure about his job lasting for a while. And finally, it looks like the arranged marriage of the BJP and the PDP in Jammu and Kashmir has finally drawn to a close. And why do we call it an arranged marriage? Because just like arranged marriages, Mehbooba Mufti's father had secured his party's alliance with the BJP because he wanted to have a little baby granddaughter government of his own. The decision was against the better judgment of Mehbooba herself, but she went along to honour her father's wishes. And as soon as her father was out of the picture, Mehbooba came up with her own demands for the BJP, 
none of which it seems they will meet. So much like an arranged marriage that is destined to fail, the BJP-PDP alliance in the valley met its conclusive demise this past week. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Ignore us again the week after next when we bring you another episode of Not In My Backyard.